Hi there, everyone. How are you? Welcome, Susan Knights. <laughs> I love this gnarly cat. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's Susan Winter, and I'm back with another show today. Thanks to Jordy, Jordy Delight. Jordy gave me this topic today, which is green flags. Now, you know, I've been on a vacation, and last time when I tried to do this, there was no super chat. It's two there, was, there was no chat whatsoever. So I hope, can everybody see me and hear me? Is it all good? We're live. Okay, here we go. So thank you all. Today, we are talking about green flags. And I love this topic because Jordy is correct. We spend so much time focusing on red flags. How would you even know what a green flag is? And especially with modern dating. So as a side note, I want you all to know that I had a wonderful time meeting in person B and Gwyneth and so many lovely people that showed up to the Munich meet and greet. It was fabulous. Thank you, everyone that came. It was just a thrill. So I'm going to be asking you what you think green flags are. And Jordi, I'm so happy you're with us today. I'm going to start now. Hello, everyone. Hi, Shaylee. Hi, Encia. Um, hi there, Peter. Cindy, oh, first time here. Welcome. Hi, Dee Dee. South Africa time. Oh, my goodness, 8 p.m. Hi, John. So let's begin. Thank you, Jordy, for the topic. So Jordy is an Instagram uh, follower and a YouTube subscriber. Jordy writes, something I think that could be really interesting would be a discussion on what are green flags. I've been doing a lot of work with young people on what are healthy relationships and what they look like, and we had an open discussion on what red flags are. However, none of us could really think of green flags. Healthy behavior, characteristics, traits to spot on a date. It says a lot that we're so focused on the negatives. So would love to hear your thoughts on the positives to look out for at the beginning of dating. Jordy, thank you very much. And for those of you on Instagram, it's at Jordy D Light Official. That's D E E. Thank you, Jordy. I think this is a great topic. All right. So, what are green flags? When in doubt, rule number one the opposite of a red flag. Now, I do understand that there are people out there dating right now who have no idea what a healthy relationship looks like. And maybe you think it's a fairy tale or you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that has a really great relationship. And you've been through the mill and the revolving door of the ghosting and the chatting that gets you excited and then it falls away. Or, the, or worse yet, the great first date. The great first date. They're so interested and they're so into you. And oh my God, the connection, the connection, the connection. Nothing. Crickets. You never hear back from them. You don't know what happened. You think it's you. So, first of all, if you don't know what a green flag is, it's the opposite of all the nonsense that you've endured. I'm going to tell you how it begins. All right. Um, the first thing is that you will feel excited, but you will feel an inherent sense of comfort. And this is on the first date. And what this means is that this person has the ability to make you feel at ease. Remember, we want a partner that allows us to shine. And when people are in judgment of us, or if you are in judgment of yourself and seeking their approval, you will be spending your entire first date or your first interactions with them trying to see if they like you. On a really good date with a person that would be a green flag, somehow you're going to bypass that and you're going to find yourself involved in the conversation, really listening to them because they're really listening to you. And you're going to notice the fact that you're not scared and you're having a really good time. And maybe it's going to feel unusual or new or different, but liking who you are when you are in somebody's presence is a key factor. Do they make you feel okay about yourself? Now, what that says about them 
is that they are comfortable with themselves. Remember, the people that are the most critical of us are also critical of themselves. And even if they're delusional and narcissists, we will always feel that we are walking on eggshells and seeking their approval. And you don't have to do that in a good relationship. In a good relationship, the person sees the totality of who you are and they appreciate it. So that would be my version number one. I'll run through these and then I'm gonna read some of your answers, okay? Two is um, their pace. The pace is going to feel good. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. Those of you who have met players or hit and run artists or con people, whatever you wanna call it, they are charismatic, they are so interesting. Oh my God, they're praise bombing you, they're love bombing you right away. They think you're amazing, you're gorgeous, you're talented, you're so big and strong, you're everything they've ever wanted. Oh my God, and you're eating it up. Who doesn't? We're all susceptible to that, but it's moving very, very quickly. You tend to feel in the beginning of getting to know somebody that they're rushing it. And you're excited and you, you feel a sense of pressure that you have to keep the pace with them or else they're going to lose interest in you. And this is not a good sign. Pace should feel comfortable. You should feel as though you're moving in tandem. And if things get uncomfortable and you feel it's moving too quickly, either physically or they're pushing you into a commitment and you hardly know them, that's for their sense of control and security. That is not about you. And that means there's something wrong with this dynamic. They want to control you. They want to control the scenario. Something's going on, okay? So they shouldn't be pushing you to get into bed any sooner than you're ready to. They shouldn't be pushing you for a commitment so this is in the first series of dates, okay? Pace is important. Oh, so what would, what, would, what would a good pace feel like? A good pace would feel like in the middle of the first date, you're having such a good time, you would really hope to see them again. And they might even ask you if you're free in a couple of days. They've, they've really enjoyed being with you, okay? So they will make plans to be with you. They will want to see you. Uh, another positive sign is transparency and authenticity. They are less concerned with playing it cool and more concerned of being attentive to you and interacting with you. They're consciously aware of you and they're keyed in. They're present. They're not on their cell phone. They're not checking their cell phone. They're not looking other people up and down. And for the ladies out there, you know this is a game. How many times have you gone on a first date with a guy and he's insecure? Well, you don't know that at the time. All you see him doing is checking out other women and looking at his phone and you feel like shit. Honestly, you feel like, why am I even here? Oh, that's a head trip. That is a head trip to show dominance. Like I have a lot of choices. You are so lucky to be here. And we don't want that. that those games do not work. In a healthy relationship, a green flag is a sense of transparency. If a person is... A little nervous because you're really even better looking than your profile picture they may say god i'm a little nervous you're really good looking <laughs> okay i mean your your photo is great but uh and they'll be honest about it because they are in control of themselves do you understand so before i go any further let me see jordy again thank you for this i'm so glad that you're all talking to each other let me see uh what else is going on here Let's go down. Any other questions here? Let's see. All right, gnarly cat. All right, finally, I found a good man who treats me right. Thank you for your advice, Susan. They helped me a lot. That's Minsuga Genius. Oh, Yang. Jalang, Jalang. It's really hard for me to say that. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I know who this is. Four ninety nine. Jillian, we adore Jillian. Jillian comes on this site. Jillian is happily involved, but she is so lovely to come on here and say hi. Focusing on green flags helps us to energetically align with what we want instead of zeroing in red flags and possibly bringing in what we don't want. Ma Master Manifester here. Thank you, Jillian. I really appreciate that. That is super advice. And we do adore you, just so you know, okay? 
We adore you. Thank you so much for the four ninety nine. dollars I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all of your super chats, all of your contributions. Here is 20. Mito, you said it's your first time here. Welcome. Uh, hi, first date with this woman. She is shy and she might have low self-esteem. She is not sure if I like her, still knowing her. She texts, if you think we're not compatible, don't be afraid to let me know. How can I help her or do? Okay, so um, do you like her? If you do, tell her I like you and I want you to know that. If you don't like her, she just, I, I like, I like, she may be, as you think, shy, but she's really good at being communicative. So she's been down this road before. She would rather you tell her straight up, hey, look, I don't like you. I don't think it's working out then lead her on. So she's looking for clarification. And if you like her, now's the time to say, no, I actually like you a lot. And I would like to see you again. You can't give her confidence, my dear. I mean, relationships can indeed heal. We heal each other if you're both incredibly conscious and you are aware that that is the purpose of a relationship. Relationships pair us with our opposite are similar and are opposite. And they are probably the greatest form of self-exposure if we are self-reflective. All your stuff is going to come up. You could think you're incredibly secure. You run a bank. You're a superstar. You're, I don't know, a top model. You're super rich. You look really good. And you get around somebody that unnerves you and you don't know where you stand with them. Suddenly you're like a scared kid and you're reduced to nothing. So relationships do have the ability to, with two conscious partners, support each other's growth and awareness. And that's on the highest level. There are people that just trudge through it and they're looking to change partners till they find somebody that doesn't irritate them. But um, in a good relationship, you will also have some challenges. And when I say some, what I mean is <laughs> you're not going to have chronic chaos, but our partner is designed to align with us and support us and also expand us. And in the process of expansion, there will be some friction. That's how we expand, okay? So a long way around saying, you can't give her self-confidence, but in a loving, committed relationship, she can indeed grow more secure. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much for your contribution. And I'm glad that you're here for the first time with us. Thank you. Um, okay, Jordy, uh, thanking you. Very excited to hear your thoughts. Jordy, and I'd like to hear yours as well. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Develop feelings for someone cold hearted and me being the golden retriever. <laughs> I know I got, I got that. I feel very bad after talking to him. What should I do? Is a relationship between such people energies at all possible? Why would you try? Just saying. Why? Why? I, I mean, you're telling me, you're admitting to yourself, um, that this person is cold hearted and you're warm hearted. Why are you trying to turn stone into water? I, I, I don't understand. Um, if, uh, this is a little, okay. If you are at a point in your life when you want to appear as though you're trying to pursue love, but you really don't want it, this is a perfect choice. If you are treading water because you're really interested in your career, but your friends are saying, oh God, you really need to be with somebody you haven't tried and you're just appeasing them, but you're trying to make sure you don't get involved, perfect choice. It'll give you all the agony of feeling like you're in a relationship, but none of the forward movement to be in one. However, if you are actually looking for love and you really want somebody, do not choose somebody that's incapable from the beginning. It's what I call having the three-legged horse and hoping you're going to win the Kentucky Derby. Why would you start so hard? 
unless you're Susan writing a book or doing research. I did the research for you, so I can simply give you the answer. Don't bother. Does that help? I know. I'm, you know, as I'm getting older, the answers are easier. <laughs> but why would you do that to yourself? Okay. Let's see. How do you keep the spark alive in a relationship? Okay. Totally different question. You have to keep growing and you have to grow with your partner and you need to try new things. You have to reboot this relationship on every level, sexual, mental, emotional. Do you have a common interest with your partner? Because you have to rediscover them. But to be fair, your partner also needs a growth mindset. If you're the only one with a growth mindset, it's going to be hard. But part of being in a long-term relationship is continually trying to see your partner with new eyes as though you've never seen them. That's why people stray. Somebody looks at them, and for the first time they see something, oh, I never saw that before. Because to be honest, when you see them, they're probably in sweatpants and a t-shirt with their feet on the couch watching a Netflix movie. But when they go to work, they're all dressed up and looking sharp. Nobody knows about that funky toenail they have, you know, or the bad breath in the morning. So keep trying, but explore new things. You need new in order to have something that is solid remain exciting, you need to continually work to put in new input, new exciting input. Okay, uh, let's see. Camellia, I met a friend a few months ago and we really clicked at first. I wasn't sure if the chemistry was in my head or not because I feel like he's out of my league, one out of two, but he's been the one to initiate things with me and I haven't really been confident enough to follow through. Okay, good self-admission, that's step one. We still keep up with each other, but do you have any advice for me? Yeah, get over yourself. You know, there's a greater pain that lies on the other side of this. I'm gonna ask you to please challenge yourself to step up and engage with this person and answer the question that will plague you forever, what? If, now for those of you that follow my work or for those of you here who have worked with me, you know my philosophy on this. At the time that most people think I'm going to tell them to break up with their partner, I will have them go back in and reconfigure everything because I feel that the greater pain that one will suffer in a relationship is if it doesn't work out or you haven't tried or you didn't dive in and give it your all and you and you hid and you retracted and you weren't sure and you were scared, I feel that the greater lifelong lasting pain is wondering, what if? What if they were the one? What if, what if I blew my chance? Because I was too scared to simply say yes. You, in order to get the love you want, you must please make peace with the fact that you are going to have to reach over that long limb at the end of the tree that looks like it's going to break. And you are going to have to reach for that fruit. And if the limb breaks, it breaks. But you did it. You cannot be frightened of loving. It is inherent in the design. There is no guarantee but I promise you, the more you do it, the stronger you get. It's, I mean, imagine, and, and the other thing, you're, you're, you 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 want to learn how to ride a bike. The first time you fall down, you're like, I'm done. You wouldn't do that in life. In life, we don't do that. The, the first time you're on a skateboard, the first time you fall down when you're skiing. Uh, people, you can't, it, it's about practice. So I urge you, my request of you is that you, challenge yourself to respond. And if this person is giving you an overture, like, hey, do you want to hang out? You say, absolutely. Yes. Or for you right now, when this show is off, for you to text and say, hey, just thinking about you, wanted to say hi. You've got to reach out. They are just as scared as you are. So that's my two cents. Okay. Um, I have a couple more of these green flags that I want to read. Uh, okay, let's see. Everyone, uh, Gwyneth, okay, Gwyneth is talking to everyone. I have to be careful with these green flags. My ex-wife totally deceived me. 
yeah, there, these things can happen. I, 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 we have people that are very good at all this and we have people that change and we have people with an agenda. I'm not giving you any promises because you're not going to get any in love. You know that. In any dating coach that tells you they can save you from heartache and they promise you you'll never feel pain, they're not living in the real world and they're just selling you the Kool-Aid that they want you to drink. It's not real. But you can be smart. You can be smart. We all, the best of us can get fooled. The best of us. No matter what you know, no matter who you are. Do you know how many relationship experts I know that have messy relationships? Yeah? Why do you think they're in this field? What is the thing about the therapists? Therapists have messy lives. They go to sort themselves out and they're like, oh, hey, I think I'll do this for a living. So, yes, people can play and they can con and they can posture. Um, but I guarantee you that what you see today uh, to the person that wrote this, had you these eyes now, you would have noticed all of those red flags in the beginning because the pace would have been too quick. Probably this partner was way too loving, way too soon, way too sweet, way too nice, way too perfect. Just you thought you were in heaven until they captured you, married you, then boom, came out of their bag. Right? Okay, so here we have one more. 15, thank you very much. Uh, Ronit, hi, how are you doing? Hello, Susan. Just want to let you know that love listening to your videos and adore your perspective. Thank you, thank you. That is so sweet. I love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. Thank you, thank you. I love that. Thank you. Um, super, super, super. I, I have the best, best, best followers in the world. I know it, I know it. What are the green flags in a long distance? Okay, long distance age gap relationship. Aura? In a long distance relationship, green flags are that they keep in contact. They work to see you. They plan dates with you. They are attentive. They are available. If they break a commitment to have an online date with you, a virtual date, they make up for it ASAP right away. When they take something away, they give it back. Can't do Thursday. I'm so sorry. I've got an office call on Zoom, but I'll tell you what. Um, can we do Friday morning? I've got about an hour before I need to start this project. And two, are they making plans for your future? When are you going to get together? Now, age gap, whole nother thing. Are you the older, let's see, hang on. Like, Aura, I'm guessing you're a woman. Aura, if you're the older female, I don't know whether you, what kind of relationship you're in. Um, I don't know what their identification is, but if you are the older person, you may have to guide the way. You may have to, you have to be even more transparent about what you want, what you would like from them, how you are hoping to create a relationship and make sure to get their input. You have to do a lot of communication and you may have to do some boundary setting and you certainly have to do definitions. Everybody has a very different idea of what God is. Same thing about relationship and the word dating which in my world means meet you for coffee or be taken out to dinner. That has now slid into, I had sex with, and I don't know what it call it, but I'm gonna legitimize it, make it look good. So I'm gonna say I dated them, okay? So you have to know what do they mean by, when they say, I want to, um, are, are you exclusive with them? Can you trust them? These are green flags. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm going to go, yeah, older, older woman, younger man, yeah, you may have to do a little teaching. Okay. Camilla, thank you so much. Oh, I aspire to be like you. <laughs> you are so sweet. Do you like watching Netflix at night? I'm so exhausted by the end of my day. I love, I love staying in my house and never leaving because I'm so busy all day long interacting. But then I, I have these great vacations like I had with Barb where I met B and Gwyneth and all my people in Munich. Okay, what do we have here? We have a doggy. We have a doggy. The little doggy, Nika. There's another little white doggy here. Yes, a cute little white doggy. Cindy Chen, four ninety nine. I have a disability and struggle to share online dating apps, but I also want to be transparent. I feel others might find me unattractive, undateable. I don't know what your disability is. If you feel unattractive, is this a physical disability? Um, is it facial? I don't understand. Uh, certainly, 
that is a harder trip on your head. I do understand, and and I sympathize with that. Um, on the smallest end of the spectrum, I know ladies that if they gain weight, they won't even date. They don't even want to leave their house or go out on a date with somebody. Certainly don't want to be sexual. So um, I've had a number of clients who have disabilities. And some are very apparent. If you are in a wheelchair, you got to show a photo of you in a wheelchair because they're going to be very surprised if they show up on a first date and don't see you that way. So I, I would be transparent yeah. about that. Nika, she's coughing, I don't know what this is. Um, I would be transparent about that because it's part of the package and you can't really hide it. Um, but I would frame it in the most possible way. You know, you have this condition, but show all the other things that you are. This is not the definition of who you are. This is, this is, a reality of what you deal with, but show your personality, your musical interests, uh, your cultural interests, show your intellectual capacity, show your communication skills, all these things. Show the dynamic person that you are, and then this is just one more, this is just some other thing, okay? I, I, I hope that answers your question, Cindy. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. You, oh, you give such sound and wise advice, Susan. Thank you. Thank you, Podcat. Um, let's see. Hi from the UK. I love watching your videos, Susan. Had my heart broken far too many times, and your videos have been a great comfort. Uh, Natalie, I, I do thank you. Maybe say Natalie, I'm not sure. But uh, did you see How to Find Love as a Cynic? I had to do that one. Yeah, I know it's hard. Yeah. I think there are two generations of women that have been in New York since Sex and the City, and it's sure what they saw Carrie and all those girls doing was certainly not their reality at all. They got put through the revolving door of, you know, being corporate roadkill with these guys with expense accounts and stuff like that. So um, I do understand. I have a very close friend that I work with, um, somebody on my team who is – Totally, like, she sees the problem before it comes, and I think that's part of the problem. So we have to believe, we have to believe that it's possible. And I know that there are times that that's a lot of work. But if you don't believe it's possible, it's really hard to create that in your world, because even if it's right in front of you, you're going to assume it's not real. So I do know you've had your heart broken, but maybe the question is to reassess the investments that you've made and go more slowly. Um, I would first say, don't get physical so fast. There's no safety net under there. And I'd take your time to get to know somebody. The longer, I know it sounds so old fashioned, but it's really true. Somebody that wants to know you is willing to make the investment. And this goes straight gay, it doesn't matter. You know, if they want to know you, they'll take time. And the more they know you, the more they're going to like you. And the more they see you, and the more they feel close to you, the less they're really gonna wanna hurt you. That has been my experience. And you have more traction. But if you move to the pace of today, which is meet, greet, sleep, boom, like that, you got nothing, no safety net, <laughs> no escape hatch, no nothing. You're just, it is what it is. It's a roll of the dice and normally it does not go your way. So slow down on the sexual pace and see who lasts. That's a great filter and it's not a game. It's not a game, it's, it's for you to get to know them. You know, I mean, everybody rushes this sex thing. It's going to happen. This is, these are called romantic relationships because that's what we do. We have sex with this person. And if you're looking to have a meaningful, romantic, sexual relationship with deep chemistry, you've got to build the roots to it. If you want a passionate affair, 
have it, but know it burns quickly and it burns out. If you can take the ride, fine, but know your disposition. I know. I'm, I know. I'm too integrated. I hated it, but I know that I can't just sleep with somebody with ease. I can't. And it doesn't mean like, oh, I need you to validate me. It's just like it's kind of a VIP area for me. You know, it's not, I don't open up the red gate or the red velvet ropes or whatever. I, I, it's just not, you know. So know yourself, okay? That's uh, Now, I want to get back to green flags, everybody. Um, okay, let's see. Now, intention. This is a green flag. As you read their profile, and, and Jordy, this is responding to you on first dates, are they able to say with absolute certainty, I want this, this, and this, I'm looking for that? Because if you know what you want, whatever it is that you want, and they're echoing that they want the same thing without hesitation. If somebody has to take a while to say it, if I, I'm assuming that many of you here are looking for a meaningful, committed relationship of substance and quality, okay? So coming from that perspective, do they want that? Do they do relationships? Do they do monogamy? You know, if you don't want monogamy and you're only into poly or whatever, just whatever your thing is, you got to be honest about it. And if they hesitate and they've got to think about it, I, well, I mean, it's been a long time since I've said this, but I had a drill that I used to say, like, uh, are you open to the possibility of a relationship with anybody that started to chat me up, whether I was in the, you know, when, I'm, when it's clear they're chatting me up, I would just ask them that. Because if you're not open to that, you're cute, you're adorable, yeah, you're very sexy, love talking to you, but not sure I want a detour. I don't know. It's not where I'm going. So do your intentions line up? Are they able to say with clarity and certainty, this is what I want? If they want what you want, that is a green flag. And communication. Are they able to speak to you? There are lots of these silent types and we love to project onto them. Oh, they have such depth. They're so intelligent. It is really hard to do conflict resolution when your partner doesn't talk, can't communicate. When you feel too uncomfortable to share. When something about the dynamic of being with this person, when you want to share something and then you kind of feel the urging to like, oh, I better not say that. They're going to get upset if I say that. That's not, that's red flags. That's red flag territory. So in a green flag territory, you want to be with somebody who is open and communicative with you. You want to be with somebody that doesn't have a problem sharing honestly, because through honest communication, the two of you will be able to work through your conflict resolution. Relationships do not survive, no matter how much passion and desire there is, if you can't get through your problems. And the problems get bigger. And if they're unresolved, they become resentments. And resentments are the things that kill the desire for sex. Resentments are the things that kill the relationship. So that's where that goes. So can they communicate? Okay, there. That's that. And see what uh let's see hi brian how are you doing uh nika is there yes yeah, she was coughing i was worried about that yes intention always i asked this before i even meet up uh with them for their intentions love that jordy no time wasters now after the breakups yes okay and the final point that i have to talk about baggage okay is their baggage reasonable a handbag, an overstuffed carry-on. How much baggage are they carrying? Combined with what attitude do they have? Okay, now, people can have bad things happen to them. They can have baggage. Their ex could have left them in a horrible situation financially, emotionally, but what is their attitude toward the baggage they have? And how have they done with, how have they done with the dealing of life because you need a capable 
partner to work with. If you have a partner who, you know, and I know those of you who are the hero and the rescuers, all you loving, wonderful givers that want to go in and save this person and you can help them and your love's going to help them and your business acumen is going to help them. And oh my God, they don't have a home to live in. And if they just had this connection or that connection, stop. That is a death knell of a relationship. And I want to be very clear about this. The double-edged sword in that dynamic is while you run in as the rescuer to help this person, you feel noble and on the surface, it looks like a good deed, okay? It does, and it is a good deed. But whether you know it or not, you are not so altruistic that you don't want to be appreciated for this because it's a lot of effort. Probably costs you time, money, and effort, mental space. I, you know, It costs you something to give this. And so you inherently expect that, well, you know, they should feel more lovingly toward me. But what happens is by coming in to rescue a partner, they develop the innate understanding that they are incapable. <laughs> this is the twist that happens in being the savior that unknowingly, they unconsciously have absorbed the understanding they are incapable because you have come in to save them. And then they can, if they have a specific kind of personality, begin to hate you, resent you, because every time they look at you, they are reminded of their inadequacy. So their next move will be a power play to regain control and independence and show you that they have power, whether that's to make you jealous of other people or to cheat on you or to gaslight you or whatever. So be very, very, very careful. If you are both helping each other as teammates, that's another story. But the rescuer may be the one left on the floor, okay? You're, the one that you rescued may just fly off without a thank you and actually be a little resentful of you because it's, it's, a, it's a long dynamic. Anyway, you've got to have, everybody's got their stuff. And I describe people like when you see them, it's like uh, little kids when they go to school in America, they have these little brown lunch bags where they used to years ago. I don't know what they've got now. Uh, maybe they have, I don't know, Uber Eats deliver to their school. But they, you know, it's like in a brown lunch bag and a bunch of these brown bags. And you don't know what's inside an apple and a sandwich or it could be a mouse trap. You don't know what's in there when you reach in. And everybody is a brown paper bag until you get to know them. Like the person that talked about the wife, the spouse that completely turned into something else. You don't know till you get there. So what we have to figure out is that everybody will have baggage. Does the person you're aligning with have the kind of baggage you can handle, okay? Because there are some things that we don't want to handle. I don't want to handle anything that compromises my safety. No, 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 you can't be in some drug cartel. I don't care how hot you are and how much you love me. No, no, no. I don't want somebody coming in with a machine gun in the middle of that pump across the bed and hurt Nika <laughs> and me, right? So you can't have that. Is, is, is my safety, my sanity, and my security. Those are my bottom lines. If your baggage affects those things, not having it. Okay, so those are some green flags. I hope this has answered this. And again, go back to the first one. I think the first one's the most important. You will innately feel comfortable in their presence. There's something about them that you feel okay to be yourself. Okay, so now I'm gonna read what you all have to say. Let's see, um, is there anything here? She just knew so much about how I've been feeling despite not even knowing my situation or backstory. She's very intuitive. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, I think you're talking about me. <laughs> Uber Eats delivered to their school. Okay, uh, Susan, you are so right. Dealing with a partner who struggles to communicate is like banging your head against a brick wall. It's so heartbreaking. It destroys any potential in a relationship. So I, I have a new client and, you know, it's amazing. The people who pay me the most are the people with probably the least amount of money. You would think, right? Like the really wealthy, uh, well-off, no. 
And the gal that I've been working with has a really hard job that we all admire. And I'm going to be very cautious on this because I, I don't know who's listening to this. But her partner does not communicate. And she innately felt a no-talk rule. I call it the no-talk rule. That if we say something's wrong or we try and talk about an issue, then we brought bad into the relationship. So there's a no-talk rule in the relationship that she felt, so she went mute. And then her partner won't communicate. So what happens? The partner builds resentment, builds resentment, builds resentment, and blames her. And she doesn't know what's going on and why this man is so aggressive. And now they're in therapy and the guy's just unloading tons of resentment. But he never once articulated. And she was so boxed up because he was boxed up that she felt the intense, it's, it's like it colored the entire relationship with this tone of, if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist, right? And so she was like this the whole time, afraid to move ahead, afraid to move back, just kind of frozen and terrified. And now she's learned how to communicate. So we got a whole nother story going on. Now she's smart, she's self-empowered, she knows how to communicate. Now she's starting to look at this like, oh, I thought he was a good choice for a while, but I don't know now. He's kind of not got the skill set. Okay, I think somebody just made a contribution. Okay, 50. Oh, Brian, you unbelievable man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Susan. I finally met the lady that gave me all my green flags last month. She was wonderful and we had the most amazing time. It's currently a long distance relationship, but both of our families set us up as an arranged marriage and want to marry her as soon as possible. Next time I see her, I am not against arranged marriages. I'm telling you, when I look at the world today and what we've done in the last 20 years with the dating, uh, I, I've got a job. This is a profession. Do you know how crazy the world has become that I have to talk people through relationships? So I'm not so sure that that's a bad idea. I think it's, it can be very good because you know what? People in, a rela in, a, in an arranged marriage... The families have been vetted. It is a bigger construct than just, do we want to be together today? It's a commitment to the family. It's a commitment to the community. And it's a commitment to make it work. You guys don't divorce. You like each other and you have set the intention that you have the same goal. And at one time in my life, maybe some 40 years ago, I thought that was a terrible idea. And the longer I live, I realized that in some ways it mirrors a more, I don't know, like 1900s version of marriage, pre-divorce, that we're in this thing and we're going to make it work. And we know that it's work and we have one goal, that is to unite this, to create a family, to do the best job, to create a good life. And I'm thrilled for you. If this is what you want, I'm thrilled for you. And you've got some relationship skills because you've been watching this channel. So this is wonderful. You know, there are so many relationship designs out there today. And you get to mix and match. The beauty is we get to paint this canvas whatever colors we want. We get to be whomever we want. We get to be ourselves in this time period that a hundred years ago, five years ago, they may have killed you for being who you are. And now we get to be who we are, express love as we see fit and come with a toolkit that is reasonable and rational to create the kind of wonderful love that we want. And I think there is a beauty in that. I think there was a beauty in commitment but I also think there was a cage in commitment when people didn't know and married under duress because it was the right thing and that was their life. Maybe they didn't have a partner who was working with them. So Brian, I wish you the very best. 
I really do. And I'm glad that you think she's wonderful. This is great. Um, let's see. Okay, now we have some more. Um, I know, Susan, thank you so much for all the help. I watch your videos daily. <laughs> How should we behave normally in front of a crush? Wow, well, that's you got a crush. You can't behave normally. You're going to blush. You're going to act. You're going to. When you have a crush, you're constantly trying to hide the fact that you've got a crush. Um, let's see. When we have to see them every day and not to totally self-correct and change, it, it, it's very challenging. The way to eliminate a crush and all the tension is to turn to the person and say, I have the most amazing crush on you. The minute you speak it, the tension is killed. I'm just saying it's, it's crazy, but when you speak it and it's out, it's all that sexual tension and desire and story in your mind of how you imagine them that's got you so crazy. And remember, when it's a crush, you don't really know them. Oh, yes, I know them. I see them every day at the workstation. No, you don't really know them. Oh, yeah, 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 we've gone out for drinks after work. No, you don't really know them. No, 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 we were on a volleyball team together. You don't really know them. Like the person who wrote us, you can marry somebody and don't really know them. So our crushes are powerful because they are our fantasy mixed with a sense of I can't have it. I want it. I can't have it. I want it. It's a secret. It's got all the juice you could create. But if you want to dispel it and act like a normal person, just say, I have the worst crush on you. Be careful if they're married. Read your HR hand guide first. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Shaylee, sorry for asking over and over, but really want your insight. What's the difference between moving too quickly in a relationship versus being intentional? I, they're different tracks. Being intentional is knowing what you want. Moving too quickly is a question of pace. These are different. You can be intentional that you want partnership that will be sexual. Moving too quickly, moving too quickly means some part of you is not moving as a whole. Normally in our world, it would mean your lower body moves quicker than your heart and your head, okay? Your <laughs> genital area is racing forward long before these catch up, okay? So when we are unified and aligned, we should move at the pace of integration. When you, Because that's the only way you're going to move and hold. See what happens, Here, here's the pain. When people rush too quickly, you know why they pull back and then run away? They can't, uh, it's, it's, like a, it's like playing football. You've got to gain yardage and hold. That's what I tell my guy friends. I believe me, I know nothing about football. I think that's, I think I'm using the right terms. But you're looking to gain yardage and hold it. You don't want to backslide. So when people, when one aspect of them, their sexual desire moves faster than their emotional connection and their mental agreement with being with that person and what that means, when that is out of alignment, they can't hold it. Something happens and they're, they, they, it's whimsical and they leave. Do you understand? So they're two different constructs. And if it is a question of intention to be in a relationship and the person is pushing the pace, telling you, well, we're going to be in a relationship, just come on, let's be sexual right away, that's, that's incongruous because that person is not taking you or your feelings or desires into question. It's, it's one-sided. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, did the love uh, cart and I want, and I said I want a magical story. Did that session because my hope was fading, so don't give up. Okay, we are at 248. Jordy, thank you so much for this suggestion. And if anybody has a suggestion, you may send it to me. We have the video request is on the last page, the contact page of SusanWinter.net. It's a box, a square box that says video request. I'm going to get my programmer to make it huge so you can't ignore it. That's where you write it, and that's where we get it. B and Gwyneth, thank you so much for being here. I adore both of you. 
We went out to dinner. We went to the Blue Nile dinner in Munich. Then we spent the day together at the Hofbrauhaus, House and then later at Brenner's in Munich. That was awesome. That was fantastic. Um, one more thing. For those of you who have bought um, the Dating Games Guide, please let me know. Uh, write to media at susanwinter.net and give me a review on it. Let me know how it works for you. Those of you who haven't bought it yet, it's terrific. If you are in a jam, it's like having me in your back pocket on demand. It's three sections. If you, you can buy them individually. If you get them all together, it's a little bit cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. So the bundle price is $10 off the list price. And it's really helpful because you can add in any term verbally or you can type it in. Anything you're seeing happening in your relationship and the AI goes to the exact moment of the exact video where I'm talking about this. And there's 10 hours worth of videos. So it's fabulous. Everything from seduction techniques to ghosting and, and I don't know, like backpedaling and every term you want to know. There's terms, tricks, and traps. And the link is on the shop page of susanwinter.net. But I think it's a really good tool. And I liked the concept because going through somebody's video, for those of you that watch and you remember, I know she said something about that. And, you know, you, you want to catch it, but then you're going to get sideswiped, right? You know, shoe ads and all that other stuff that's going on. So I strongly suggest that. I have, okay, Jillian, I have big news. I'm engaged. Okay, we got to stop, all of us. Let's give a round of applause to Jillian. We love you. Nika, are you applauding? No, she's lying like this. We love you, Jillian. We love you. What can I do for you? Just let me know, please. I'm so happy for you. You are such a beautiful, beautiful soul. This person is the luckiest person in the world. We love you. B loves you. Gwyneth loves you. All the people that come on here, we really appreciate your warm, beautiful, honest, gracious presence. You're so giving and so positive. And you are making somebody very, very happy. And so, yay, yay. Oh, you bought the Dating Games Guide, Gnarly Cat, and you love it. Please give me an idea of what you like about this. Really value this. Thank you so much. I think the biggest green flag is reciprocated energy. I live by that. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is very late. I think um, Jordy's in, uh, they are in, um, Ireland or Scotland, I think. Okay. Um, Jillian, we love you. Everybody, Brian, Pablo, I'm going to say goodbye to you all. If you want to work with me, I'm opening up sessions again. I was gone, but I was busy seeing my friends. So um, I have sessions again if you want to work with me. Thank you so much for coming each week. I adore all of you. My work is nothing without people to listen and respond. I'm hoping to save you heartache and make you equipped for this journey, whatever you want to find. I thank you all for your loving participation. And um, I just wish you a lot of love, joy, and happiness. Goodbye until next week. Mwah. Thank you, everyone. Jordy, thank you so much. Bye, Gwyneth. Bye, B. Bye, everyone. We are saying goodbye from the Big Apple.